How's it going, guys? Uh, in this video, I want to go over the module 5 test. So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, number one, we're asked to find the value of P of a parabola with a vertex of 5, negative 1, and a focus of negative 3, negative 1. Uh, you could do this algebraically, but for me, I think the easiest way is to do it graphically. We're giving you a graph anyway, so we might as well use it, right? So we have the point 5, negative 1 right over here, and negative 3, negative 1 right over there. So our focus is always going to be in the opening of the problem. So I already know my uh, problem is opening to the left, and if we're opening to the left, that means our 4p has to be negative, which in turn makes, in turn makes our p negative. So our p is going to be negative, so I already know that. So all that's left now is to count from the vertex to the focus or vice versa, and we end up getting 8. So our p has to be negative 8. Uh, another way is just to do the vertex minus the focus, or sorry, the, the uh, focus minus the vertex, so you have negative 3 minus 5, which gives you negative 8. So the focus minus the vertex will give you your p value, which is negative 8. All right, uh, number two, which way will the given parabola open? Uh, for this one, we see our y term is being squared. So if our y term is being squared, that means we're opening horizontally, so left or right, we don't know yet. And we see our 4p value here is negative. If our 4p value is negative, that means we're opening uh, to the left. Uh, sorry, to the left. So we know we're opening to the left since the y term is being squared. And our 4p is negative. So that means we're opening to the left. Uh, number three, write the equation of the directrix of the parabola given by the equation negative, four, uh, negative 48x equals y squared. Uh, same thing, you could do this algebraically. I'm going to do this graphically. So uh, for this, we know our uh, 4p is negative 48. So our p has to be uh, negative 12. Because you divide each side by 4, you divide each side by 4, you end up getting negative 12. And the distance from the focus to the directrix is going to be negative p. So our, our vertex in this, in this problem is 0, 0. We know that by the form, we don't have an h or k value. So our vertex is 0, 0. So we uh, do 0 minus negative 12, which gives us a positive 12. So we know our directrix is equal to something to 12. Now we need to know if it's going to be x or y. All right? And we can know it's going to be x equals 12. And that's because our, our equation is uh, y squared equals negative 48x. Our y term is being squared. That means we're opening left or right. If we're opening left or right, that means our, our uh, vertex, or sorry, our directrix has to be opening up and down, or has to be going up and down, sorry. So our directrix has to be going up and down, so that means it has to be x equals. If we're going to do this uh, graphically, what we can do is graph our vertex right here. It's at 0, 0. And I, like I said, we're going to be opening to the left because the y term is squared, so we know we're opening horizontally. And then 4p is negative, so that means we're opening to the left. So we're, so we're going to be opening something like this, and the directrix can never uh, intersect with the problem. So that means we know our uh, directrix is going to be an up and down line, and since our p is 12, we're going to go 12 this way. So that is what our directrix will be, which is the line x equals 12. And let's pretend that points at 12. So that's how you can, that's the two ways you can use to get your directrix. Uh, number four, uh, find the length of the lattice rectum. The lattice rectum is just the absolute value of your 4p. So in this case, it's just 28. Number five, write the ordered pair of the focus of a parabola if its vertex is 4, negative 3, and directrix is y equals negative, or sorry, y equals 1. Uh, we can go ahead and just make a, uh, or use the graph, so we have 4, negative 3, right over here, you have a directrix of y equals 1. So we need to figure out uh, what the focus is. So um, the focus is going to equal distance from the vertex as the vertex is from the directrix. So from the focus, I'm sorry, from the vertex to the uh, directrix, we're 2, 3, 4, we're 4 units away. So that means we have to go another four units to get to our focus. So we end up getting a point of four, negative seven. 
because the distance from the the uh, vertex to the directrix is p, and the distance from the vertex to the focus is also p. They're equal distance from each other, so that's how you can use that to get your focus. Uh, number six, write the equation of the axis of symmetry for the parabola. So let's go ahead and just grab what more or less what this will look like. We know our vertex, this problem is negative 6, 7. So negative 6, positive 7 right over here. And we see that we're opening left and right because the y term is squared. And we know we're opening to the right this time because our 4p uh, value is positive. So our graph is going to look something like this. It doesn't really matter, but it's opening to the right, and that's where our vertex is. And our axis of symmetry will be this line right here, which is y equals 7. So our answer to this is y equals 7. Another way to go about it uh, is if we're asking for the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry will always be whatever is being inside the parentheses that's being squared. The k value is 7, and it's in the uh, same parentheses as y, so it's just going to be y equals 7. The axis of symmetry will be inside the parentheses that's being squared. So in this case, it's y equals 7. Uh, number 7, write and graph the equation of a parabola, a four parabola, with focus 2, 3, and directrix y equals 1. Okay, uh, for this, what I like to do is I'm just going to draw my own graph. I think uh, uh, graphing it just makes my life that much easier, so that's what I'm going to do. So I have a focus of 2, 3, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So that's where my focus is, and I have a directrix of y equals 1, or this line right here. Actually, just so we can differentiate, we have a, we have a, a directrix of y equals 1, and a focus at 2, 3. So right here, I can see that my, uh, my vertex is going to be right here at 2, 2. So my vertex has to be 2, 2. So looking at my answer choices, I can already go and cross out B and C. Because that's telling me I have a Y value, both of them have a Y value 3, but I don't have that. My uh, vertex is 2, 2, so I have to have H and K values of 2. So B and C are gone just like that. Now I need to figure out what my P value is. Right? So my P value is the distance from the, focus, from the vertex up to the, up to the uh, focus. So from the vertex up to the focus, we go up once, so we add 1, so my p value is 1. So p equals 1, so 4p equals 4. So 4p equals 4, that means I end up getting the equation 4p, or sorry, 4 of x minus 2, or sorry, it's going to be y minus 2 since we're opening up and down. So 4p goes with the y term, so it's 4, y minus 2 equals x minus 2 squared. The 4p term always goes with the parentheses that's not being squared. So it's 4, y minus 2 equals x minus 2. And that's because we can see we're opening up since the focus is above the uh, vertex. So we get a as our answer. For A, uh, the two equations were graphed on a set of axes below. Which point is a solution of the system of equations shown on the graph? Uh, we have two equations. The solution of both equations is where they intersect. In this case, uh, we don't have an answer choice for this one, but we do have uh, for this one the uh, second one, which is 8, 9. If you count where the point is, we end up getting a point of 8, 9 for that answer. Number nine, which graph could be used to find the solution to the following system of equation? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the vertex of the first one. So it's negative three, uh, positive, uh, negative three, negative one, sorry. So that's our vertex. So I'm going to go to my answer choices and mark off everything that doesn't have negative three, negative one. So right away, A and B are gone. because Those are negative three, positive one. Now what? Negative three, negative one. The second one, I'm going to change it to Y equals. So I get Y equals negative x plus 2. So I have a negative slope, so that means I'm going from up to down. Uh, my uh, negative x line will be something like that. So I can go ahead and cross out c, since that has a y equals x line that's positive. It's a positive slope, but I don't want that. I need a negative slope. So that just leaves d as our answer.
All right, number 10, uh, what is the solution of the following system of equations? Solve the system of equations uh, about algebraically. Make sure to show you the algebraic process when we see full credit. So let's go ahead and do it. So we have, um, let me rewrite this to make it a little clearer. Y equals x plus 3 squared minus 4, and y equals 2x plus 5. So uh, our y's both equal the same thing here, and our x is also equal the same thing. So what I can do is I can replace the first y here with what the second y is equal to. So I get 2x plus 5 equals x plus 3 squared minus 4. So now I'm going to foil out the x plus 3 squared, and I'm going to add like terms. So I get 2x plus 5. x plus 3, uh, when you square that out, you get x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 4. 2x plus 5 equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. These 5s cancel out. If you minus on one side, it's going to cancel out the other one. I'm going to minus 2x. I get 0 equals x squared plus 4x. And uh, from here, you can use the quadratic formula if you want to to get what your uh, answers will be. I right? just remember to add 0 for your c. Another way is to just factor out an x. So I have 0 equals x times x plus 4. I took out an x from both the x squared and the uh, plus 4x. That's what I'm left with. And now I, I see I have two factors, right? I have x and x plus 4. The x by itself, that factor tells me x equals 0. And the second factor, x plus 4, that tells me x equals negative 4. So I have my two x values, and now I need to find their corresponding y values. So when x equals 0, I'm going to plug that into the second equation. So I have y equals 2x plus 5. y equals 2 times 0 plus 5 or y just equals 5. So when x equals 0, y equals 5. That's one answer choice. And for the other one, I'm going to do the same thing when x equals negative 4. So when x equals negative 4, I get y equals 2 times negative 4 plus 5. y equals negative 8 plus 5. Or y equals negative 3. Or my answer choice will be negative 4 negative 3. We're not answer choice my uh, solution. So I have my two solutions of 0, 5 and negative 4, negative 3. Those are both solutions. And also I just want to clarify that it doesn't matter which equation you use to plug the x's back into. You'll get the same y values regardless. So plug it into either one that's, uh, that's easier for you. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same, you'll get the same y values. Sorry. Okay. So, for number 11, we're given a system of three equations, and what we're going to do is we're going to solve for x, y, and z. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a matrix. I feel like matrices uh, makes these problems much, much easier, so that's what I'm going to do. So, before I put this into my matrix, though, I'm going to swap the first and the second row, just because I want my first entry in my matrix to be a 1. So, when I do that, my new system of equation is x minus 2y, minus z equals 0, negative 2x plus 5y plus z equals 7, and 4x plus 3y equals 17. So now from here, I can put this into my matrix. So I end up getting 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0 negative 2, 5, 1, and 7, and then 4, 3, 0, 17. Uh, so remember with matrices, what we do is we delete in an L. We want to delete uh, the spaces where negative 2, 4, and 3 are, and we have to delete them in that L. So we have to delete the space where negative 2 is, and then where the 4 is, and then where the 3 is. And also remember, uh, the first row is always going to delete the first column, and the second row deletes the second column. You have to delete in that way, or, you're, or it's not going to work out. So always remember, first row, first column, second row, second column, in that order. So the first thing we're going to delete is the uh, negative 2. So to delete that negative 2, I'm going to multiply the first row by 2, 
add that to my second row, and that'll uh, give me my new row two. So I'll multiply the first row by two, so I get two, negative four, negative two, and zero. My second row stays the same at negative two, five, one, and seven. I'm going to add these two rows, and the sum of this, these two new rows gives us our new row two. Two plus negative two is zero, which is what we wanted. Negative four plus five is one. Negative two plus one is negative one, and zero plus seven is seven. So that's our new row two. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. Our first row stays the same. Our second row is now zero, one, negative one, seven. And the third row is four, three, zero, and 17. So now I have to delete that four. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm multiplying the first row by negative four, adding it to row three. That gives me my new row three. So negative four times row one is negative four, positive eight. Uh, negative four times negative one is positive four, zero. Uh, row three is four, three, zero, 17. So I'm going to add these two rows up. In the sum of these two rows, it gives us our new row three. Negative four plus four is zero, which is what we wanted. Eight plus three is 11. Four plus zero is four, and zero plus 17 is 17. So that's our new uh, row three. So let's go ahead and put this into our matrix. We have one, negative two, negative one, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 7, 4, 3, 0, 17. So now we're going to use the second row, or sorry, I'm not sure about the 4, 3, 0, 17. It should be 0, 11, 4, 17. 0, 11, 4, 17. What we just got, our new sum, was our new row. Sorry. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to delete that 11. Right? That's the last thing we need to delete. We need to delete the space where the 11 is. And to do that, we're going to use the second row. Right? The 11 is on the second column, so we're using the second row. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do is multiply the second row by negative 11, Add it to row two, or sorry, row three, and that will be our new row three. So negative 11 times row one gives us zero, negative 11, positive 11, negative 77. Our second row stays the same, zero, 11, four, positive 17. So we're going to add these two rows up. It's zero, negative 11 plus 11 is zero, 11 plus four is 15. Negative 77 plus 17 is negative 60. So let's go ahead and put this into our matrix. 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 7, then 0, 0, 15, and negative 60. So the last thing we need to do before this becomes a fully Gaussian eliminated matrix is I need to change that 15 into a 1. Remember, a Gaussian eliminated matrix has ones for the uh, the uh, the uh, cross section, whatever this is called. I don't know why it's on blank on it, but the across right there should all be ones, not with the zero. And we need the bottom left corner to be zeros. So where the red is, this needs to be zeros, and what I circled in blue needs to be ones. So all that's left is to divide the third row by 15. So I'm going to, I'm going to multiply the first, I'm sorry, the third row by 1 over 15, and that's going to give us our new row three. Just go ahead and rewrite that. We're just dividing the third row by negative, I'm sorry, by positive 15. 0, 1, negative 1, 7. And 15 divided by 15 is 1. Negative 60 divided by 15 is negative 4. So now we have a Gaussian eliminated matrix. We can go ahead and put this back into a system of equation. The first one, 
The first row, sorry, gives us x minus 2y minus z equals 0. The second row gives us x minus y equals 7. And the third row gives us z equals negative 4. So I have my z. So what I can do now is I can plug this, I can start plugging this in backwards. Uh, well, and that's the second row up. Don't know what's wrong with me today, but uh, the second row should be y minus z equals 7, and the third row is z equals negative 4. There we go. So we have our z value, and what we're going to do now is do back substitution. I'm going to take this z and plug this into the row above it. That gives me my y, and it was taking my y and my z. I'm plugging this back into the last equation there to get my x. So z equals negative 4, I'm going to plug that into y minus z. So I get y minus negative 4 equals 7, y plus 4 equals 7, or y equals 3. So I my z is negative 4, my y is 3. Now I'm going to plug this into the last, uh, plug both of those back into the last equation. I get x minus 2 times our y, which is 3 minus our z, which is negative 4, equals 0. x minus 6 plus 4 equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0, or x equals 2. So I have my three values. All that's left is to put it into an ordered triple, and that will be my answer. 2, 3, negative 4. And that's what our answer for this problem is. All right, number eight. A box contains uh, pieces of wood cut into triangu uh, triangular, uh, pentagonal, and hexagonal shapes. There are 53 pieces of wood in the box, and the pieces uh, total 253 sides. The box contains five more pentagons than triangles. So we're going to go ahead and figure out our three equations that gives us our answer. So we do know T plus P plus H gives us the total amount of shapes that we have, which is 53. So we can go ahead and cross out A and circle B. Uh, next, we're told there are 253 sides. So 3T gives us all the, si all the uh, sides of triangles we have, plus 5P plus 6H should all equal 253. So that gives us C and we can cross out E from that. And the last line tells us the box contains five more pentagons than triangles. So that means that um, for every pentagon I have, I have five, so for every triangle I have, I have five more pentagons. So what I like to do is when I write my equation, I can double check myself by thinking, well, if I have one triangle, I should have six pentagons. Since one plus five is six, I have five more pentagons than uh, triangles, when I do, when I put in 1 to this equation, I should get 6. And when I, so when I do that, I get P equals 1 plus 5, which indeed does equal 6. So I know this is correct. Because I have 5 more pentagons for every triangle I have. So the total amount of triangles that I have. So we get F for this problem. All right, which of these following, uh, which of the following matrices has two by three as its dimension? Remember, it goes rows by columns. So we need two rows and three columns, and C is the only one that fits that criteria. Uh, 14, which matrix represents the system below? Uh, so let's go ahead and put this into a matrix. So the first one, or before we do that, actually, we have to add like terms and move everything over to one side, all the variables on one side and a constant on the other. So for the first one, if we move the uh, 3 over, we get 2x minus 3y plus 4z equals 21. The second row, we add the 5x over, 5x plus 6y plus 8z equals 10. And the last row, we're minusing the x and the y over, negative x minus y plus z equals 0. 
So let's go ahead and look at each equate, each uh, problem, or each answer choice, sorry, and see which one makes sense. A says 2, negative 3, 4, 21. That's right. Um, let's take a step back and just go ahead and put this into our matrix. This, it'll make uh, comparing them much easier. The second row is 5, 6, 8, and 10. And the third row is negative 1, negative 1, 1, and 0. Okay, so uh, for, for A, uh, the second row should be 5, 6, 8, 10. The second row does work, that's okay. And the third row should be negative 1, negative 1, 1, and 0. That one seems like it's going to be the right answer. But let's go ahead and check, check out B and C as well, see what we get. Uh, for B, it says 2, 3, 4, 21. That's not correct. It has to be a negative there. So that's wrong. Uh, C says 2, negative 3, 4, 21. That's right. Then it says 5, 6, 8, 10. That's not, I'm oh, sorry, negative 5, 6, 8, 10. That's wrong because we want a positive 5 there. So that leaves A as our answer. Uh, for 11, we're using Gaussian elimination to describe the next possible step in reducing the augmented matrix. Uh, remember, like I said before, we delete stuff in an L. So it looks like the 0 is already gone. So the next possible thing we need to get rid of is the 3. And to get rid of that 3, we need to use the first row, right? The first row at least the first column. So the first row, we have to multiply it by negative 3. We're going to add it to row 3. And that addition gives us our new row 3. So we need negative 3 R1 plus R3 into row 3. And it looks like A will be our answer for that. Okay. Now we have which system represents the graph below. Uh, this is really hard to see. So let's go ahead and just reshade everything. So this line right here, put this in blue. And we shade everything underneath this one. And then we have this one right here, let's make this red. And we're shading everything right here for that. All right, so now we need to figure out which system equation, or sorry, which system represents this graph. So it looks like we want everything above that red line. So everything above that red line, uh, that red line looks like it's going to be y equals 2x plus 4. That's what the line is. And we want everything greater than it. So let's go ahead and just rewrite that. We want y to be greater than or equal to 2x plus 4. So you want everything above that red line. And then for the blue dashed line, uh, it looks like that's going to be negative x plus 4. And you want everything below that line. So you want y to be strictly less than that line, so less than negative x plus 4. So those are our two equations. Let's go ahead and look at our answer choices and see which one fits. And if you look at our answer choices, it looks like b is the only one that uh, fix those two equations. All right, and uh, for number 17, the last problem on the test, uh, we're told for her wedding, Miss Hogan will have a formal dinner for at most 280 people. Uh, the hall of the venue she picked has two kids, uh, two kinds of tables, those that see four people and those that see 10 people. The hall can contain up to a total of 52 tables. Which system of inequalities can be used to determine the possible outcome, or possible combination of tables so there are enough seats for all our guests? So we're going to assume x and y are not negative. So x is going to be for the uh, tables that see four people, and y will be for the tables that sit ten people. So we know from the beginning, we know x plus y has to be less than or equal to 52. And that's because the hall cannot fit more than 52 tables. So the total amount of tables has to be less than or equal to 52. After that, we're saying x equals the uh, seats that sit four people. So we know 4x plus 10y has to be less than or equal to 280 as well, because the hall cannot fit more than 280 people. So that's where our two system equations has to be. And if you look at our answer choices, only one that fits that is C. And that is the module five test, guys. Hopefully this helped.